Mexican corn tortillas contain the simplest and fewest ingredients. You only need corn flour and water. That's what I call easy yumminess. Homemade corn tortillas can be made at a moment's notice to satisfy your tortilla needs. Centuries before Christ, the Mayans in Mexico and Central America domesticated the edible type of corn we eat today. Corn was so important to the Mayan civilization, it was believed there was a maize god and humans were originally made of yellow and white corn dough. Hmm, ponder that one for a moment. The Aztecs beginning in the 14th century dried that domesticated corn and ground down the whole corn kernels into cornmeal. They learned that soaking the corn kernels in lime solution softened them to where the hard external kernels could be removed, thus producing a softer final flour or masa. In the early 16th century, the Spanish conquistadors came to the Americas looking for gold. In a way, they found it. It just so happened to be in the edible form of corn from the Aztecs. For my easy Mexican corn tortilla recipe, you'll need masa harina, which is corn flour seasoned with lime, salt, and water. In a large bowl, we're gonna to whisk together 246 grams of masa harina, which is about two cups, and then uh, one teaspoon of salt. Now, if you want a little extra flavor, Sometimes what I do to this recipe is I'll add one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of chili powder. The seasonings are just nuanced, they're not very strong, but if you want just put cheese on it, make a sort of like a quesadilla of some kind, it's great to have a little extra flavor in that dough, right? But we'll go simple today, so we won't add the extra seasoning. And then we're gonna pour in 250 milliliters, which is about a cup, it's a little bit more than a cup, but if you're just using cup measurements, start with one cup and then you can always add a tablespoon or more if you need it. But 250 milliliters pretty much works just perfectly for me. And then we're just going to stir it up and make our masa. Okay, you know you have enough flour and water when you can make a ball out of this entire dough. So if you have any flour left over, you may need to add some more water. So it should look like this. And then when you break it apart, you could just do a sample break up piece. And as long as it'll stay in a ball, then you should be okay as far as flour and water ratio. Okay, so now you're gonna put your dough on a work surface. You can flour it, but I don't really find that I need to. Now I keep a little bowl of water beside me because as I'm manipulating this dough, if, it, if I just feel like it's a little dry or I get little sticky hands and I can just dip my fingers in there and then I can touch the dough and it pretty much holds its shape. So we're gonna divide this into 12 relatively equal pieces. You can eyeball this. You can try to do maybe six on one side and six on another. You can also weigh these. If you weigh them, you want between 41 and 42 grams each. I will go back and weigh mine because I always do but you don't have to do that. All right, so we're gonna get six out of this side and six out of this side. So they're gonna be small balls. Okay, so that would be 12. Now I'm gonna weigh them and then just add and take dough away as I need to. Once you've divided them up equally, then just roll them each into a ball. Rolling them helps to create more of a uniformed circle when we go to flatten them out. You could also roll on your surface if you'd like. If you don't have a tortilla press, no worries. Take a quart size zip top bag, some scissors, snip off the side that has whatever the opened end with the snaps or the zip top. All right, and then you're gonna cut two of the other three sides and I'm just gonna leave one of the sides intact and just snip all the way down to the end, and then cut the end over to the side, just like that. All right, so then you take one dough round, place it in the center of one open side, fold the bag over along the crease over the top, take a flat bottom dish, something, a bowl will be fine, or just a casserole dish, Place it on top of the dough, press down firmly as much as you can. So it's a little bit smaller tortilla than we want. So I like to go all the way around, increase the pressure, and sort of rock my container back and forth so I can get 
all of that dough spread out. We're looking for about a six inch in diameter circle for these corn tortillas. That's my six inch in diameter, about five and a half to six inches. I think that's good enough. If you're not happy with your flattened out, you can always just take a rolling pin and go back over it and flatten it just a little bit more. And then there you are. So then when you're ready to put it in the skillet, you just remove the plastic from the top, remove it from the bottom, and your tortilla is perfect for the skillet. Go ahead and preheat a skillet over a medium high heat on the stove. Get a heat proof platter or plate and two pieces of foil, one to put on the plate itself. We're gonna stack our tortillas as they cook on top of the plate. And then we're gonna add another foil on top of that as they cook. Your skillet is hot enough to cook the tortillas and you can add a splatter of water and it sizzles. So we're gonna take that first tortilla that we flattened out. Go ahead and in the dry pan, put that tortilla. We're gonna let it cook for about 45 seconds to a minute. The first one might take a little bit longer just because again, that pan needs to get really, really hot. And then we're gonna flip it. While one tortilla is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and flatten out the next one. So just as we did before, take your round center of one side of the bag, cover it with the top, press down with your flat object, and then rock it around to keep that round circle, but also to stretch it out. We're looking for that six inches in diameter. Keep an eye on your tortilla that's baking. When it gets some brown spots, the first one may not have so much. Go ahead and flip it over and then continue working with your other tortilla. When your tortilla has cooked through, ours are definitely dry on top and bottom. Then place it on the plate with foil and then top it with another sheet of foil to keep it warm. And we're gonna add our second tortilla Again, just take off the top plastic, remove the bottom part of it, put a pan, move on with the third one. When these cook, they should be soft and foldable. So if you find that yours are hard and crunchy, that means your heat is too low, so raise your heat. If you find your tortilla is cooking through too quickly and you're getting dark brown spots, then you should probably turn your heat down. Notice we're getting some nice, good brown spots on our tortilla, so our heat is just perfect at the moment. Cooking my last tortilla. I can keep them on the plate and covered in foil. They are still hot. Steam is still coming out from the top. But if you want longer storage, because it's gonna be longer before you eat, just put this on a heat proof plate in a 200 degree oven and those tortillas will stay soft and warm. And they're staying soft and warm now between the two pieces of foil. Corn tortillas all cooked, baked, and ready to eat. So let's take a closer look. You wanna make sure that they don't cook too hot we wanna make sure that we can fold them just like you would a taco. Perfect taco right there. And let's take a look on the inside. Notice it tears nicely. You'll notice that this corn tortillas are grainier than a flour tortilla because the cornmeal is denser, but it did cook through. It cooked all the way through. There's no gumminess, there's no doughiness whatsoever. And I love how you can get the brown on the top. It's a beautiful stack of corn tortillas. Use corn tortillas in any recipe that calls for them or eat them as is. Use them in enchiladas, fajitas, quesadillas, tacos, taquitos, tostadas, or whatever you want. I personally like to add a little cheese or vegan cheese on top, sprinkle on a little cumin and chili powder, and heat in the microwave until cheese melts. Great little snack. Corn tortillas can be like gold when you consider their versatility and even nutritional value. Now, go make some tortillas and call it a day. Thanks for your support and watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. So, you know how it goes. Until next time, go bake the world.